Hi, this is Jorge Fernandez with Katif Technologies, and in this session of Katif's Autodesk Virtual Academy, we'll be going over inventor drawing templates and getting you ready for your title block. First, a quick reminder that the Virtual Academy is every week, year long, every Thursday at 10 a.m. We'll be discussing different design topics, and these sessions are recorded, such as this one, of course. So the goal for today is to create templates from scratch inside of Inventor as well as show you how you can leverage an AutoCAD template if you have one already. So let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing you'll want to do is go to your projects and make sure you know where your templates are at just in case you might already have one or you need to go in here and see where you can grab the one that you may already have. And then we'll use the standard drawing inside of here already to leverage it and create our new one. First of all, we'll delete the ones that we have in here by default, which deletes them just off of this page, not this drawing. Now we can right click in the title block folder under the drawing resources and define our new title block. This takes you to a basic sketch mode that you may be used to already and allows you to start putting in your own dimensions, constraints, and line geometry. The dimensions that you select to bring in here will not show up once you actually save this title block. This is all just while you're in sketch mode that you're seeing some of this information. Some of these lines, maybe you decide you don't want to show up. So you can also use sketch lines, uh, center lines and sketch lines, and you know, uh, maybe change the color of some of these lines and so forth, just depending on how you prefer to set this up. Also, don't forget that even though some of this already may be constrained, it can be very helpful in the title block to at least have a report to you what the dimension is. And also, don't forget to reuse dimensions wherever possible to make sure that everything stays linked up when necessary. Now, when we place text in here, you'll notice we can just place standard text. We can uh, type it in and then choose how we want to position it as soon as it comes in. In other words, you'll get a little insertion point that comes up with the text, which we can then dimension to so we can place it exactly where we want it and have a nice consistent title block. So you see here, we're simply dimensioning from the edges to the actual insertion point of the text. As we put in another piece of, of text here, what uh, you'll start to notice is, after we've decided what position it's going to take and what it is, of course, is we can also use sketch geometry. As I mentioned earlier, we can use sketch only lines. So in here, we're actually going to kind of leverage the first one here and start making a line going down. The reason for doing something like this is one, some people have that personal preference. The other reason is if you have multiple lines of text that is a column or a row and you want to make sure you line them all up, it can come in handy. We'll just finish this by constraining it to the line geometry that exists there. And off we go. The next part is adding text and how we can get that auto filled. So we have a pull down list here of different properties of the model, of the drawing, of the physical properties of the model as well, like mass and so forth, which allows us to simply insert it in here. You know, again, tell it how we want to place it. In this case, we'll put it bottom justified. So we can go ahead and dimension it to the bottom if we needed to. The next type of text we'll bring in here is prompted entries, where it'll do just that. It'll prompt you as soon as you start this drawing or start a new page for this information. So you can type in whatever you want in this case as long as you apply that property there. We'll just simply use some constraining here to get these lined up another nice method of course and now we're going to take a look at bringing in your company logo you can bring in an image vector data but when you bring in an image make sure you unlink it this way you don't have this file lingering or not able to find it when you're creating your title block or your drawing we can then move this logo around and grab the handles on the sides there to make it smaller put it exactly where we want it to go we can actually dimension to the lines of this box as well now when we finish the sketch, we'll be exiting the sketch mode as well as defining a name for this and saving this title block showing up in our drawing resources. Now we'll define a new border. We could have reused it of course, but we'll just go ahead and show you how to create one. In here, by the way, you can bring in regular text as well, prompted text and so forth if you'd like to include that in your border. What we'll do here is by drawing that rectangle, we can now dimension this. And again, I encourage you to reuse your dimensions as much as possible uh, if they are, in, in fact, of course, the same ones that need to be linked up to each other.
Once we finish the sketch, once more, we go ahead and type in the actual name that we want for this border. That way we can move forward and place this on the drawing. To place it, all we do is just simply double click it. When we double click it, it starts to prompt us for that prompted entry we had put earlier that we see here. Where did this come from though? It came from the properties of the model. So if I right click the actual uh, drawing here, we'll notice that we can go to the tab for summary and that's exactly where it came from. We want to go back and edit as you notice there was a line there that we didn't want to show up so we just assign it a sketch only and we very easily fix that up right here. The next part is leveraging an already existing template. You notice here I can go to a drawing and go to its options and be able to import it instead of just opening it up. This way a wizard comes up that tells us uh, or walks us through how we can leverage this. Which layers do we actually want to apply? Or do we want to go through the graphics window and actually select the geometry that we want? Once we move forward we simply tell it what we want to do with it. In this case it's a title block so it knows what to do with it puts it in the title blocks under drawing resources. Once we go to field text, you'll notice that there are prompted entries in here already for us, which we can leverage again. These are basically attributes or blocks that came from the AutoCAD file itself. So we can just type in what we want it to read out as, and that way it'll populate it on the drawing itself. Now that we've done that, let's edit this because as you see some of this text is kind of funny to read and that's because some of the fonts that came from AutoCAD are kind of old and with the new graphics that we have available here that it just looks this way. So you'll want to come in here, probably change the font, change the color type uh, so that it's something much more legible. Keep in mind that you could have done this beforehand as well, so you kind of have to weigh that option and think about how much editing you'll have to do. In some cases, it can be easier to maybe just start all over. just depends on the amount of changes. Once you're done, though, you finish your sketch and save this. You could have done save as as well, and you are now ready to start leveraging your template. In summary, what we took a look at is creating your own template from scratch. Uh, in a nutshell, we also saw how we can edit it as well, reuse the properties that come from the files themselves. Uh, we can create those prompted entries so that we can type it in as soon as we start a brand new drawing. Um, there's a porter and a title block under the drawing resources. And don't forget, do not link the lo logos. Uh, if you can avoid that, it'd be best. And you can leverage your AutoCAD drawings as well. So just have to measure how much work might be needed to fix it. I'd like to thank you for joining us. Don't forget to visit us on our different social media sites for any further updates. Thank you.